Hello everyone, this is Adam for realhomerecording.com. In this video, I'm going to explore the difference between hardware and software monitoring. This video is not intended to be condescending. In fact, it's quite the opposite because I made a huge amount of mistakes while learning how to do audio engineering. That's how I got to where I am nowadays and I still make mistakes. I'm still learning. I'm trying to always improve at what I do. So, there are a couple of ways when you're recording on how to monitor your audio. Number one, all right, so this is the Audion ID14 interface. This is the control panel software called ID. But the mistake that many people might make is this. They'll double click in Reaper or whatever your DAW is. You'll hit record arm. And then you'll hit this button right here that says record monitoring. If I turn it on, this is what happens. Check, 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 check. check. I don't know if you can, hear, if you can hear that or not. There's a delay. There's a delay. Yeah. 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 It should be it going should be to going the screen, to the screen capture, capture software. software. I'm going to turn, I'm it, gonna off. turn it off. Check, check. Okay. So as you can hear, there was a delay in my voice. I'm going to turn this off now. So the reason for that is because right now I have my sampling set to 2048 for my buffer setting. In fact, I would normally have this set to ASIO, which I'm not going to click on because it'll actually crash my screen capture. But it would be set to ASIO, which I talk about in another video. And my buffer setting, if I were recording, would be set to 64 samples. And the reason for that is because that's the lowest that this interface can do. That is because I want to be able to record with the lowest latency possible without clicks and pops. Now, your computer may not be able to support that because it's old, it's too slow, you have something set wrong. And, you know, that's somewhere where you're going to have to talk to possibly the people that make your interface and they may have suggestions for you. The way that I have my system set up right now, which is an i7 fourth generation Intel processor. And I have, uh, let's see, like Western digital hard drive. Actually, it's a Seagate hard drive, a Samsung SSD and USB 3.0. So I have a pretty good system and the way my system's set up, I can actually do 64 samples without a problem. But your system may only allow you to do, let's say, 256 samples of buffer, okay? And in that case, that's just what you got to do. The problem with that is if you, if you try to do any software monitoring like I just did, there's going to be a delay. There's no way around that. With one exception... If you either have a PCI interface or a Thunderbolt interface, at that point, you have the top-notch digital system and your what's called round-trip latency will be so low that you can record with it as if it were analog hardware. So the workaround to that is twofold because I don't have a Thunderbolt interface or a PCIe interface. I have USB 2.0, okay? <laughs> so here's what you do. First of all, let me cancel out of this. First of all, under your interface, as you can see right now, I have this muted. It's, it's a big red M. That's my mute button, all right? And that is for the reason that I don't want to hear myself right now. If I click this button, here's what happens. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. Can you hear that? I can hear that. I don't know if it plays for the screen capture software. I'll find out when I'm editing this. But right now, there's virtually no delay. It's so little that I really don't even hear it that well. It's almost like I'm talking through a mixing board. Almost. So, that's step number one if you want to hear yourself. Now, if you don't want to hear yourself, you mute it, okay? So let's mute it now. Here's the other thing. Right here under 
again, this is the control panel software. Your doll, your interface will be different from mine, but you have two options. You have your main mix. If you look over here, it says main mix. All right, my speakers are through my main mix. And you can either have your headphone output or your speaker output set to either the Q mix or the main mix. And the way you do that is by pressing these buttons. So I'm gonna do it on the headphones because I don't have that on right now. So the headphones will now be receiving the secondary output called the Q mix. Now, under Reaper, you're gonna have to adjust that possibly for the output because by default, if I say I just clicked on the in and out, I only have the main output going, actually I should click on this one. See how it's set to one and two? All right, now if I hit add, it should show me my other output options. Okay, it doesn't because I'm not under ASIO. Normally though, you would see four outputs and those uh, one left and two right. And the three left and four right would be the option that you would choose. That way you can have all your output going to the Q mix and then from within the software is where you can adjust everything. So first of all, what I do, the very first thing is I turn the Q master all the way up because all my other Q, see the Q thingies here? <laughs> the Q sliders thingies, geez, I sound like, <laughs> I sound like a girlfriend. Um, so the Q mix is all the way down, right? So even though I have the master up, you won't hear anything right now because all the sliders are all the way down with the exception of that one. Okay, now it's all the way down. All right, so now you wouldn't hear anything. And the cool thing is the Q mix can actually take two outputs. If you see how it says doll one plus two and doll three plus four, well, what I was saying earlier about three and four, that would be your separate mix. So that allows you to not only mix with different settings here, but also different settings here. So let's say I was recording somebody. It sounded good through my speakers, right? It sounded good through the speakers, but the musician that I'm recording wanted to have, you know, the bass guitar up. They wanted to have the vocals louder. They wanted to have whatever louder, okay? I can actually, in here, per track, let me do this so... See where it says audio hardware outputs? Oh, this is screwing me up because I don't have that option in here. See, I can't, I can't fully show you this. So I'll tell you what. I'm going to put a screen capture on screen right now showing you what I'm talking about. So at that point, you'll have two additional hardware outputs, and you can adjust the volume for each individual track for that output. And then what you do is your Q mix is going to be off of the of the secondary DAW 3 plus 4 mix. Again, your control panel software for your interface will be different but similar to this. So right now I have my left channel panned all the way to the left. I have my right channel, uh, DAW 4, panned all the way to the right because then in headphones, it'll be to the left and right channel, the speakers there. Now I could also just so I hear it, put my speakers on QMix as well. There's a fourth option, which I don't recommend because if you click on it, this message pops up. <laughs> and yes, it is possible to blow your speakers this way. So I typically will only have my speakers on the main mix. The headphones will have the QMix. And that way, not only can I control the DAW mix, but I can also control if there's two channels being recorded. So, all right, up here on the left, on the uh, microphone in, there's this other slider. I can control that, the volume of that. And again, this doesn't affect what I hear coming out of the speakers. This is just for the person listening on the headphones. I can also control where it's panned. So it can be either left or right, or pan straight up the middle. Same thing with the... Uh, you know, my secondary input, I can have that pan left or right. I can set that volume. Very cool stuff, right? Again, whenever you're recording, 
you want to record and monitor through this with one exception. If you use guitar amp software like Amplitube, then you might want to use audio software. However, bring up latency again. Your computer may not allow you to monitor your audio at a low enough buffer, and that's going to screw with rhythm timing. So in that case, this is why I recommend, even though there's a direct input built into the ID14 and built into a lot of audio interfaces, I still make use of the J48 from Radial, or there's other direct boxes that you can buy from different manufacturers. Radial is the one that I prefer, but it has a secondary output that you can run to a real guitar amp so that your guitar player can play with a physical amp so that not only are you recording the direct input, let's say channel one is the direct input, you can also have the second channel going to the amp and you can record the amp as well. That way, your musician will have zero latency with the recording. And then by the way, your DAW, actually your interface, will compensate for any buffer change. So let's say if I had you know a buffer of 2048, which is pretty big, my DAW will compensate for that delay. The other reason you would want to monitor off of your DAW and not off of your control panel software, you know, take the mute off, check, 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 is if you play virtual instruments. But again, I will caution you that I would prefer to record with whatever your piano, whatever your keyboard puts out, record with that, record MIDI, obviously, but record with the audio coming through the keyboard. And if you want to run it through the interface, you can do that. If you want to record it, you can do that. Even if you later on use a virtual instrument and that way you don't have any latency. Again, this is all about minimizing latency when recording. It is a son of a bitch. I agree, but it's something you need to be aware of. And again, the only other reason I would record with this on is I know a lot of singers like to hear themselves and they do that thing where they have one headphone on one ear and the other headphones off the other ear. And in that case, you want to have this enabled, which is cool. You know, you can, you can hear yourself in a mix a lot better that way as well, a lot of times. And the other thing is you may want to put reverb or delay while they're recording to boost their confidence. I know a lot of singers don't do as well when they hear their dry vocal. I understand that. I like hearing reverb on my voice when I'm singing too. It's that shower effect, you know? It's like, I, I, I feel more confident in the shower because I hear that reverb coming off the shower wall. You know, it's kind of the same thing when you have a lexicon emulation playing at the same time. And most of the time, there's not going to be a huge delay. I mean, reverb is inherently delay anyway, and obviously delay is delay. So having a little bit of a delay between your microphone and the doll isn't really that big of a deal. A huge delay obviously will be a problem, but again, it's all a preference, but you need to be aware of that, that instead of using your doll's recording monitor, you should be using your interface if you want close to zero latency monitoring when recording with microphones or recording with line in or instrument input, use this and then play it back later. And again, the Q mix is, is where it's at. The Q mix keeps things simple, especially if you're the one engineering and somebody else is the musician so that your mix will be separate from them. When it comes to the difference between the speaker and the headphone output, you have to control it with these knobs. So yeah, that's definitely important. And your doll, your interface will be different from mine. But on here, it's very simple right here. These big knob, well, this big knob for the speakers, this one for the headphones. And the other thing that I did forget to say is if you do want to hear the secondary outputs on the speakers, on this interface, you can just move the slider right here. Again, all the sliders here control the speaker output. So if I were to unmute this, check, 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 I got to up the volume. 
If I reduce the slider here, check, 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 and that goes away. Now the meter's still gonna go, right? Because that's gonna tell you, yes, there is something on the recording signal. And if I were to record this, there would still be a signal. This slider has no effect on the input signal. That is all controlled by the preamp knob that is physically on the interface. Just the same, this slider up here controls the headphone output. As long as the headphone is set to Q-Mix, all right? That's just how it goes. It works really well once you get used to doing it. And I definitely recommend doing it the way that I described earlier in the video. So I hope I taught you guys something. Again, I made these mistakes when I was first learning how to record with more advanced interfaces, more advanced software, and hopefully I saved you guys some frustration. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com.